My dear student friends, in today's lecture, let's study the bacterial diseases of silkworms. Silkworm rearing is a highly enterprising vocation for a large number of sericulturists across the country. The success of silkworm crop depends on many factors, the good quality mulberry leaf, proper temperature and humidity conditions, larva spacing, aeration, protection from diseases and pests etc. are some of the factors that contribute to the success of silkworm crops. Many silkworm diseases are caused due to the infection of various bacteria, virus, fungus, microsporia, etc. in the silkworm colonies and this is a major limiting factor in the successful cocoon production. Diseases such as grassery, flatchery, muscadine and pebrin are caused due to these pathogens. Flatchery diseases are caused by microbial and amicrobial agents and microbial flatchery is caused by both bacteria and viruses. Bacteria are involved in causing flatchery as individual pathogen or in combination with viruses thereby contributing for disease episodes. In China and Japan, the silkworm crop loss due to diseases are less but in India it is more and severely affects the economic returns of the rarers. Of the total diseases occurrence in Karnataka, the bacterial flatchery is to the extent of 57.22 percentage as assessed by microscopic examination of hemolyphant midget smears. Infection with several bacteria causes severe mortality and majority of the deaths occur during molt and when the worms are about to spin. Mortality becomes maximum among fifth instar silkworm larvae. Flatchery in silkworms is a syndrome characterized by flaccidity of larval body. The flaccidity caused by bacteria is referred as bacterial flatchery. Louis Pasteur reported bacteria as etiological agent of flatchery in silkworms as early as in 1870. The diseases in silkworms caused by bacteria are generally classified as bacteremia, septemia and toxemia. For better appreciation, the topic is being explained into different subheadings and they are Bac on bacterial diseases in silkworm, 2 predisposing factors, 3 larval instars and host susceptibility, 4 nutrition and host susceptibility, 5 environment and host susceptibility, 6 mixed infection of bacteria with other pathogens, 7 management of bacterial diseases. Let us study these aspects one by one in detail. And the first one is bacterial diseases in silkworms. In 1870, Pasteur had reported that a coccus and bacillus bacteria caused the flatchery in silkworms. Later, many researchers have reported that different bacteria are causing bacteriosis in silkworms. Kuboni and Garibini 1890 thought that bacillus pubonianus was the cause of flatchery. In Japan, the causal agent of Soto disease was identified as Bacillus Soto, which presently is known as Bacillus thuringiensis variety Soto. Savamura in 1960 isolated Bacillus megatherium and Bacillus elabanchi from the silkworms. Ceratium marsicans and Bacillus bombiceptis, Bacillus bombicoids, Streptococcus bombicis. Bacillus mucoids and Bacillus latrosporus, Bacillus cerisius and Aerobacter cloacae and Acromobacter superficialis, Streptococcus fecalis, Serratia picatorium, Proteus vulgaris, Proteus inconstinita, Proteus margani, Proteus aerobacter, Proteus aerogenus, Micrococcus flavors, etc. also reported to be pathogenic to silkworms causing silkworm flatchery. Chitra et al. isolated Aerobacter cloacae, Acromobacter delmavere, Acromobacter superficialis, Acromobacter delmavere, Pseudomonas boropolis, Pseudomonas ovarlis, Escheria friundi, and Staphylococcus albus. Flatchery in silkworm is a syndrome characterized by flaccidity of larval body. The flaccidity caused by bacteria is referred as bacterial flatchery. The symptom caused by different bacteria is atypical and are of general nature. The larvae lose appetite, become lethargic and vomit gut juice. The growth becomes stunted and the larvae become flaccid. The dead larvae develop different colors depending on the species of bacteria involved in causing the infection, become rotten and foul smelling. 
However, based on the site of infection and the pathogenicity caused by bacteria in silkworms, the bacterial diseases are categorized into three types. They are bacteremia, septemia and toxicosis. Uh, Let us see bacteremia. Bacteremia or bacterial diseases of digestive tract is caused due to the multiplication of bacteria in the gut. Bacteria infect silkworm primarily through mouth and the digestive tract and results in the development of a chronic type of flattery. The cephalothoracic region becomes translucent and in the advanced stage even the posterior portions become translucent. The larvae show loss of appetite, sluggishness, retarded growth and a developed diarrhea. Streptococcus faecalis and the Streptococcus faecium are the most common bacteria associated with the bacterial diseases of digestive organ in the silcobombix mori. These are gram positive bacteria measuring 0.7 to 0.9 micrometers in diameter. The Streptococcus faecalis multiplies for 2 to 3 days and form large colonies attached to the larval peritrophic membrane. After 6 days, the peritrophic membrane dissolves and the goblet and the cylindrical cells become acolyted. The larva dies as fluid in digestive tract and the bacteria passes through the vacuolated midgut epithelium into the hemolymph. In the digestive tract, the bacteria produce enzymes such as chitinase, lecithinase and proteinase which act on the midgut epithelium and enable the bacteria to enter hemocyl. Bacterial exotoxins and endotoxins also play a major role in invasion of the digestive tract by different bacteria. The toxins damage the gut wall and enable the bacteria to enter the hemocyl. Infection of Streptococcus faecium in fifth instar larvae result in lowering of gut pH from the range of 8 and 9.5 to 7.5 and 7.6. The lowering of gut pH is conducive for most septicemic bacteria. Now let us see septicemia. Septicemia in silkworms is caused by the septic bacterial invasion into the body and their multiplication which results in the mortality of silkworms. The majority of silkworms that die from this disease omit the gut fluid. The body of the diseased silkworm becomes soft, shrunken and the thoracic region swollen. A large number of bacteria are observed in the hemolymph. The body wall ruptures easily liberating foul smelling fluid containing large number of bacterial cells. The larvae die in short span of infection. Several bacteria namely Serratia marcescens, Pseudomonas species, Bacillus proteus, Bacillus aeruginus, Bacillus prodigiosus, Bacillus pyroxinases, Streptococcus species have been isolated from silkworms affected with septicemia. But most common are Serratia marcescens and Bacillus species. In case of septicemia caused by bacillus species, the silkworm shortly after death develop dark greenish tinge on the dorsal thoracic region which later extends to the whole body. In case of septicemia caused by serratia marcescens, the larvae after death develop dark brown spots and reddish tinge which extends to whole body. Injection of 6 to 8 into 10 to the power of 2 bacteria causes death within 18 hours. The pathogenicity of orally inoculated serratia causes a high mortality at a high humidity although the mortality varies with the amount of bacteria added to the feed. Bacterial involvement in septicemia or pre-pupal or pupal stages leads to the spoilage of cocoon quality and reduction in granite productivity. The bacillus species of bacteria causing septicemia are rod shaped ranging in size from 1 to 1.5 into 3 micrometers with a subterminal spore and peritricate flagella. Serratia marcescens appear as small rods measuring 0.6 to 1 into 0.5 micrometers. These are non sporulating bacteria with the peritrophage flagella. Serratia marcescens in the digestive tract of silkworm are non-pathogenic, but when they enter the hemocyl, they multiply rapidly and become pathogenic leading to acute disease and death in 1 to 3 days. 
Apart from the damaged gut wall, the septic bacteria invade silicones through wounds caused by injury and multiply rapidly in the hemolymph. The invasion caused by serratia pisatorium into hemocele in silicone is observed to enhance by the presence of streptococcus faecalis or streptococcus faecium in the larval midgut. The lowering of pH by these bacteria favors the serratia piscotorium to multiply and invade the hemocele and produce fatal septicemia. Then let us see toxicosis. The cause of bacterial toxicosis is bacillus thuringiensis. The common bacillus involved is Bt variety soto. The larvae suffering from bacterial toxicosis will lose appetite and become sluggish. The dorsal vessel pulsates at rapid rate and larvae wriggle as though they are in severe pain. Three exotoxins namely alpha exotoxin, beta exotoxin, gamma exotoxin and an endotoxin delta endotoxin have been isolated from bacillus thuringiensis. The poison ingested by the larva is first dissolved by the digestive fluid and partly absorbed by the body which causes toxicity to the silkworms. This affects the nerves causing convulsions or paralysis. There are two types of bacterial toxicosis. 1. Acute bacterial toxicosis. This is a poisoning caused by the ingestion of parasporal crystal bodies called delta endotoxin produced by bacillus thuringiensis. The major symptoms of bacterial toxicosis caused by bacillus thuringiensis are sudden cessation of feeding, lifting of heads, spasms and tremors, paralysis, distress, sudden collapse and death. Death may occur within 10 minutes to few hours. Shortly after the death, the corpse appears hard for touch with the head retracted so as to assume a hook shaped appearance. Gradually, the corpse becomes black and rotten exuding a foul smelling dark brownish fluid. 2. Chronic bacterial toxicosis. This is caused by ingestion of small quantity of Bt crystal toxin. Mulberry leaf intake is reduced, feces become irregular shaped and occasional vomiting is observed and develops muscle paralysis. The thorax and abdomen tip becomes transparent and the worms become mo motionless. After 12 to 12 hours of bacterial infection, sluggishness is observed and loss of clasping power of the legs, flaccidity and death are observed. Now let us study the second aspect. Second aspect is two predisposing factors. A healthy silkworm is generally more resistant to infection than stress load. Stress brought about by the malnutrition, metabolic imbalance, physical and other factors result in weakened larvae and increased susceptibility to bacterial infection. In order to check the outbreak of the bacterial diseases in silkworm, it is essential to eliminate the stress factors by feeding with nutritious mulberry and rearing them under congenial and hygienic environment. The nutritional stress lowers the resistance of silicones by rendering them in inefficient in production of antibacterial and antiviral factors in the gut and hemolymph. The ability of the larvae to produce such factors in the gut is dependent on the quality of leaves. The mulberry of poor nutritive value will not be able to provide sufficient quantity of essential requirement to the larvae to produce antibacterial factor. It results in high rate of multiplication of infectious bacteria and the development of flatulent disease. Weakness due to physiological starvation due to feeding of poor quality and insufficient mulberry leaves should be avoided. These stress factors in early instars predisposes the outbreak of flatulence during later instar silkworms. Feeding wet leaves under unhygienic and humid conditions may also lead to physiological disturbance, thereby predisposing the disease development. The improper incubation of eggs weakened the growing embryo, resulting in weak larvae susceptible to infection by bacteria causing flatulence. Now let us look into the third aspect. Three. Larval instar and host susceptibility. 
Different bacterial isolates are known to vary in their pathogenicity to silkworms and the stage of growth of larvae affects their virulence. Infection with some bacterial pathogens causes severe mortality and majority of the deaths occur during molting and just before spinning. Also, irrespective of the age of infection, mortality is maximum in the final instar. The susceptibility of instar larvae in to infection by different bacteria is more or less the same. The younger larvae show varying degrees of susceptibility. Acetobacter cloacae and Staphylococcus albus are more lethal to older larvae than to first instar larvae and the reverse is true with the Asheracea friundi. The most susceptible instar is third instar as revealed by maximum mortality due to infection at this instar. Now let us study the fourth aspect for nutrition and host susceptibility. The susceptibility of silkworm to bacterial infection is governed by nutritive factors. The poor quality mulberry with low protein, sucrose or high cellulose make silkworms comparatively more susceptible to infection by pathogens. The silkworms also derive precursors of antibacterial and antiviral substances from the mulberry. The coffee acid derived from chlorogenic acid from mulberry leaves is converted in the silkworms digestive tract into antibacterial caffeoquinone. It is presumed that the antibacterial phenolic acids, the procatechutic acid and P hydroxybenzoic acid found in the feces of silkworms must have the origin from the mulberry. The fifth aspect of our study is environment and host susceptibility. The rise in silkworm rearing temperature accelerates the development of bacterial diseases. Silkworms exposed to small doses of batty variety LST leads to chronic infection, but on exposure to high temperature of around 30 degrees centigrade rapidly develops into fatal bacteriosis. High temperature and humidity leads to dysfunction of elementary canal which in turn leads to enterococcus multiplication. Now let us study the sixth and final aspect of our study. Mixed infection of bacteria with other pathogens. Since the domesticated silkworms are susceptible to many infectious agents, mixed infections are very common. Mixed infection is the association of more than one pathogen causing diseases in silkworms. Synergistic inf interference of different pathogens influences the disease development in silkworms. The pathogen or its infection acts as a biological stressor and increases the susceptibility of the insect to another pathogen. The mixed infection play a major role in reducing the cocoon crop yields. Mixed infections may occur simultaneously or one after the other and usually the interaction between the two or more pathogens involved results in synergism thereby affecting the cocoon productivity both quantitatively and qualitatively. The silkworms very less susceptible to serratia marcescens become highly susceptible when already being inoculated perorally with the Staphylococcus species. The reason being the lowering of gut pH by the Staphylococci thereby enhancing the multiplication rate of serratia marcescens. Similarly, if the digestive tract of silkworms is attached with a viral infection, the bacillus bombysis, otherwise non-infective attains an infective proportion causing damage to the silkworm crops. The symptoms of gatine are manifested only when the combination of streptococcus and virus occurs in the susceptible silkworm. Tateroga, a disease reported in Karnataka was found to be caused due to the synergistic association of bacteria such as Streptococcus faecalis variety leucophaciens, Staphylococcus aureus, Staphylococcus epidermidis and bacillus species and a Picarna virus namely Bombyx mori infectious flagellary virus. The disease was reported to begin in a localized area in the colony and spreads quickly at an alarming rate to the rest of the population. Due to this infection, the larvae were observed to be feeble, lethargic, dull with the translucent cephalothoracic region. They vomit gut juice and extrude short feces with the high water content. 
the diseases affect the later instar silkworms and the loss due to the disease was significant. Bacillus bombaysis helps for the infection of nuclear polyhedrosis virus by making the condition of epithelial cells for virus infection and vice versa. The highest mortality of silkworms in simultaneous mixed infection is due to the flatchery virus and bacteria. The susceptibility of BMIFE infected larvae increases the presence of Streptococcus faecalis and Serratia marsusens. Similarly, simultaneous peroral infection of silkworms with BMDNV2 and Staphylococcus aureus results in higher mortality as well as deterioration in cocoon quantitative traits. It is well established that synergism between BMIFE and Streptococcus species, Staphylococcus species, Serratia species of bacteria and BMDNV and Streptococcus species bacteria results in the flatchery disease in silkworms. The synergism between different pathogens generally lowers the incubation period by 5 to 6 days and causes comparatively increased level of mortality. The bacteria such as Pseudomonas species, Serratia species and Protea species along with the microsporidium spores in the larvae cause primary septicemia. The larvae generally die within 5 days without developing microsporidiosis due to mixed infection. Management of bacterial diseases. Thorough disinfection of rearing room and rearing equipments with recommended general disinfection is essential to ensure absence of pathogens in the rearing environment before and after each rearing program. Maintenance of rearing and personal hygiene during the course of rearing ensures the pathogens are kept away from the rearing environment. Use surface disinfected quality X and rear the early instar silkworms under optimum conditions. In order to prevent the outbreak of bacterial flatchery, the silkworm larvae should be reared on nutritive mulberry leaf under hygienic and congenial rearing conditions. The mulberry leaves fed to silkworms should be of good quality and rich in nutritive value to silkworms, especially to early instar worms. The mulberry grown under shade or with excessive nitrogen fertilizer is not suitable for silkworm rearing. Application of silkworm body and silkworm rearing seat disinfection as per recommended schedule and quantity prevents the spread of diseases. In addition, it is essential to provide required bed space and ventilation. There is need to avoid accumulation of silkworm waste, feeding wet leaves, overcrowding and injury to larvae. The management of temperature and humidity to suit the requirement of silkworm is essential. High temperature that is more than 28 degrees centigrade or low temperature that is less than 20 degrees centigrade and high humidity during later instars more than 75 percentage form the stress factor. The incubation of silkworm mix at 26 degrees centigrade and relative humidity of 80 to 85 percentage ensures robust growth of embryo. It is also important to pick the diseased silkworm if any in the rearing bed and dispose them by burning or using disinfectant. In order to prevent flatchery and tataryoga in silkworm rearing, the rearing trays and equipments or tools used for silkworm rearing are to be dipped in an effective disinfect solution for 10 minutes. Further, the practice of smearing the bamboo trays used for rearing the silkworms should not be smeared with cow dung which harbors abundance of pathogens and acts as a source of contamination. Further, the accumulation and fermentation of silkworm litter should be avoided. Ensuring good cross ventilation helps in reducing humidity between the rearing beds. Dusting of dry slaked lime is also helpful in keeping the humidity low and reduces the pathogen buildup in the rearing environment. Use of antibiotics to suppress bacterial flatchery, especially the bacterial diseases of digestive organ, is found to be effective. Antibiotics such as erythromycin, canamycin, streptomycin, teramycin, chloramphenicol, oromycin, neomycin, and tetracycline have been reported to be suppressive against bacterial diseases of digestive organ. Enriching of mulberry leaves with 0.1 percent gendamycin was found to reduce flatchery. As a prophylactic measure, 
Ampicillin at 500 ppm can be used to treat mulberry leaves and fed to silkworms during the first feeding of third and fifth instars to manage bacterial flagellary in order to harvest better cocoon crops. Thus, the topic can be summarized that different bacteria cause diseases in silkworms alone or in combination with other bacteria, virus or microsporidians. Bacterial diseases of digestive organ, septicemia and toxicosis are the major bacterial diseases in silkworms. There are many predisposing factors which contribute to the causation of bacterial diseases. The crop loss due to bacterial infection can be kept at minimum by following various management strategies during the course of silkworm rearing. Thank you. Thank you.